school. In this lesson, I'm going to teach you how to make this gorgeous peony and the bud out of heavy and extra fine crepe paper. So let's get started. For materials, you'll need heavy crepe paper and poppy, juniper, and raspberry. I also have a raspberry extra fine as an alternative. I printed my pattern gold craft paint, two one inch foam balls, floral tape in fern, and two paper covered floral wires. I've also pre-cut my leaves in a cardstock and a frosted paper, and you can use any color of paper you prefer. For tools, you'll need a low temperature hot glue gun, detail scissors, craft scissors, and as an option, I have French scissors, and then my curling tool for the leaves. The first two pieces that I will cut out is the peony stamen and the peony center. And for this, I'm going to use my poppy color. One of the most important things when using the patterns is to notice the grain line that's been marked on the pattern. Now this one I've cut off, it was over on the side, but it shows that I want my grain line along with the French lines. So as you can see, I'm placing it at the same direction. If you cut it the other way, you will just not get the same result, and you'll see why in just a second. So I'll cut that piece. I only need one. And then I need one of these centers. If I'm making, you know, a bouquet of these flowers, I'll probably cut more than one at a time. So I would do that by doing the full length. This is how to speed things up when you're making multiple flowers. Even though I only need one for this flower, I'll show you how I do multiples. I just stack them. And I find that the heavy crepe paper, you can probably stack about three layers and still get a really nice cut. It, really, it depends on the sharpness of your scissors. And that's ready to go. Before I fringe this piece, what I'll want to do is stretch it. So the heavy crepe paper is actually a 250% stretch. So as you can see, I've more than doubled my piece there. And I'm doing this because I, I want the heavy crepe weight, but I want um, just a little bit lighter, and you'll see why. Now I'm gonna use these French scissors. I love these. These are one of my new finds, something that Fiskars made for us. But if you don't have French scissors, I would suggest you use the small scissors and just very carefully cut them about the width of what I've shown on the pattern. So the French scissors you can just place right on top there and I'm leaving about a quarter of an inch on the bottom. But I'm telling you, this is such a fast way to do it. This is the piece that I like to start with on this flower because I'm going to add a little bit of paint to the tip and I want it to have some drying time while I'm cutting out the other pieces. So here's my French. You can see how even that cut everything. Then I'll go back. I like to wet my fingers. You can use a rag or you can use your tongue and just curl every single one of these little stamen pieces. All I do is I spin it right between my fingers and I can usually get the whole thing twisted in one spin. So here's the stamen ready and all I need to do is add a little bit of paint. So I'll place this in a bowl. I like to use a flat bowl, as you'll see, because you have all of this fray going on and you want to have the space. So let's see, little by little, maybe four or five at a time, I'll just dip those right into the paint. Okay, here we are. I have the whole stamen strip finished and painted. I'm just going to lay it down carefully and let that dry. For the stem in the center of the flower, I'll press the wire stem into the foam ball. And since this is so thick, it's a little bit harder. A tip is to add some hot glue right to the tip of your paper covered wire and then slide it in. With the heat, it goes a little bit easier. So you'll need one of these for the flower and one for the bud. For the flower, I'll take my oval piece and stretch it out. Stretch it out as much as you can in the center. Place that over the foam ball. I'm attaching it at the base of the foam ball on the two straight sides. You can see how the grain line comes down and then just stretching that around. On the other two sides, 
gathering it up and I usually just give it a nice twist to tighten it, unwrap it, add a little bit of glue and finish wrapping it. For the largest petal, I'm going to use the heavy crepe paper. And for this, you can cut between 12 and 15 uh, petals. Sometimes you want a larger flower, sometimes smaller, so that's really up to you. I'm placing the petal again, watching the grain line, make sure it matches the grain of the paper, placing it on to the corner there and then cutting the whole strip along the grain line. That way, this is a really quick way to stack and then cut petals. So you'll notice that this particular pattern has some dotted lines. And what I'm going to do is half of the petals, after I cut them in the shape, I'll add that extra B cut inside just to get some variation. So I've split up my petals and half of them, I'll go ahead and cut this little V cut I just like to have a bit of variety to my petals and this adds that perfect touch. For the smaller petals, I'm using the extra fine crepe paper in the raspberry as well. Now, if you don't have extra fine, that's okay. Go ahead and use your heavy crepe paper. For this, I've cut one strip and that makes three petals. And I'm cutting nine total. Again, you can cut more if you'd like a fuller flower. Since this has a lot of detail, I'll just cut it round at the top and then down at the other side and then come back. You can either use your detail scissors or if you have a nice pair of sharp craft scissors and then you can cut into those little grooves. The pattern is just a guide. You don't have to make your cuts perfect but it gives you a guide of where you want it to be. The last petal that I'm cutting is for the bud and I'm using the heavy crepe paper for this as well because I want as much stretch as possible and the heavy crepe paper has the 250% stretch. I can cut out three petals in one strip and that's exactly what I need. Most of these edges will be hidden, so it's okay if it's not perfectly smooth. So I have five sepal pieces that I've cut out of the juniper and now I'm ready to assemble my flower and my bud. Now that this stamen has dried, I'll take the ball that's been covered with the same color Add a nice little circle of hot glue. I would say, I don't know, maybe a half inch at the top. Place the edge of it right in the middle and just sort of spin it on. I'll wait for that to cool and then add a strip of glue around the edge. And roll it on. I'm leaving a little bit of space between each layer so that I can cover more distance. I don't want them all compact in the middle. Once that's in place, I'll put it in my cup so that it has time to cool. I'll start with my smaller petals and very gently stretch them in the center. I like to think of stretching my petals as, you know, kind of working with clay between your fingers. So you're gentle and you just mold it between your fingers to get exactly that beautiful cup shape. Go ahead and do that to all of my petals. Some of them I might stretch one direction and then flip it over and stretch it the other way. That way our little details go back and forth. Add some variety. If you don't do that, it's okay too. One of the things you might notice is when you stretch your petals, any of the little wrinkles or curves that you have in your original crepe paper will pretty much be stretched out so you don't really need to worry about it. I have three stacks of three. Starting with your center, I'll add just a bit of glue right to the tip and then place it along the side of the ball. And the idea is that I want my petal to be about the same height as my stamen. I have them broken down in three sets of three. It makes it easier to arrange I'll do somewhat of a triangle, almost touching the petal as I move around. And once I've applied the first three, I'll go ahead and place the next set of petals between those. And then I'll move on to my last three inside petals. 
and there's the start of my flower. For the larger petals, you can do as many as you want to. However, I would suggest at least 10 petals. So here I have 14. And this one, I like to stretch the base right about, I would say about an inch from the tip as much as I can because that will give this a nice curve that goes underneath the flower. And you'll want to have that curve as you build the petals out because you don't want the petals to be so tight against each other that it doesn't form this open flower. So I'll stretch that out pretty much as much as I can and continue to merge that stretch through the center and maybe even use my fingers to cup the top to give it that beautiful shape. And I'll do this for all of my outside petals. I like to use the heavy crepe paper for my outside petals because it has that 250% stretch, so you really get a lot of opportunity to give it the most shape possible. And also a heavy crepe paper holds itself a bit more. It's not easy, as easy to crush as the extra fine, so it also makes a really nice outer petal for this flower. I'll start gluing these petals right at the base of the flower, and I'll work back and forth between the ones that have extra cut and just the petals that are smooth rounded on top. And as I'm working, putting these petals around my flower, sometimes I'll, you know, look at it from this side or I'll kind of notice from that back side exactly how I'm placing them. There's, there's no science to this. Uh, it's just really what pleases your eye. So I'm giving it a little bit of overlap as I move around and then I'll position the second layer of petals kind of randomly, I guess, behind. I'm giving a generous amount of glue you can see here, kind of a triangular shape of glue. Just to make sure that it stays in place. And you can see here how the flower is starting to shape. So as you're coming to your last layer and you want your petals to fall away from the center, it gets a little more difficult. So one of the tricks that I figured out is I'll take my curling tool and this little tip on the end, I'll just curl that back to shape it. And then that little curl back piece will go right onto the stem. And there's my peony in full bloom. You can continue adding petals if you want to, or if you feel like your bloom is done. The last part that we'll add are these little sepals. So I have three different shapes. I have two of this more of a pointed shape, two teardrop shapes, and then a heart shape. I usually start with the heart shape, just to give it a little bit of a stretch. I wouldn't stretch it too much, uh, a curve. Do the same to the other four pieces. And then when you glue them onto the flower, glue them so that they fall away from the flower rather than cup the flower. I'll start with this one. This is also where you can cover up your joints and I like to add the sepal to the edge of the stem because that way I can wrap it with the stem tape or even a little bit of the green crepe paper, which I'll show you how I do that in just a second. Peonies seem to have these really beautiful, full sepals. And I think that, you know, if you see the peony from the side, it just adds so much beauty to see that green popping out from behind. So you can see the effect with the sepal in place. So at this point, you can go ahead and cover your stem with the floral tape, or another trick to do is cut yourself a little piece of the same color crepe paper, and I'm cutting it on the grain so it's, it's almost like a stem tape and it stretches the short direction. I don't need quite this much, I'll cut it down. Add just a touch of glue on the tip and then place it at the base here. And this, this actually will give you a nice color transition because it is the same color as your sepal. Add some extra glue and then twist it around and as you twist, stretch the crepe paper and it's somewhat like a stem tape. 
and just stretching and rolling that right down the stem. You can add it all the way down to the bottom or you know, to keep it nice and secure, I'll go ahead and put my floral tape right over the top and this is actually the fern. Sometimes these flowers need a thicker stem so this is also a nice way to bulk up your stem is by adding layers of the heavy crepe paper. And for those of you who are new to stem tape, remember the way that you activate it. It's wax on crepe paper. You can heat it up with your fingers. It actually sticks right on top of itself, so stem tape sticks to stem tape. And then as you twist it around your stem, you give it a little bit of a pull, and the stretch will also activate. It takes a little bit of practice. For your bud, you don't need to cover the ball with crepe paper, we're going to be able to do that with these three. And I'll stretch this out to make it as cupped as possible so it's 100% stretch in the middle and then just flare it. Do that to all three pieces. And then it's just a matter of taking the three pieces and arranging it around the ball. And there's plenty of crepe paper here so you have a lot of room to play and work and make sure that it covers everything. So I'll add some glue just to the base and I'm placing that you know, over the ball, I'll cross it over. You can have a little bit of a point there where the petal meets itself. It, it is important that you can cover the ball so you don't see the white. And then your second piece of crepe, maybe start from another direction and arrange it so that you're forming a cup around the center. I'm pressing it at the base, adding some more glue over here on the side. And we want it to look like a peony, not a rose, so make it as rounded as possible. And then the third piece, I'll finish it out. You can see how I'm gathering the base of this to make the most rounded form possible. All of this will be covered by the sepal. So here's the basic look of my bud. I have five pieces of sepal. I have, they're a bit smaller than the peony. And this time, rather than gluing them so that they flare out from the flower, I'll actually glue them to cup the flower. And then starting on one side, I'll just rotate around my flower. I added a little bit of glue right inside of this sepal so that it stays closer to the bud. Now you can finish this stem with the same method of using the crepe paper or you can just go straight for the stem tape. Remember on the stem tape you can always go back and cover it again if you have a few wrinkles or you can see, I can see the pink crepe coming through. I'll just cover that one more time and that should make sure that, you know, one color doesn't show through when I don't want it to. So I'll move that all the way down the stem just so I can have the same color and add a bit more up at the top. Makes it easier sometimes to tear it off. And there's your bud. gorgeous this is and I think it was actually quite simple. So make sure when you make your crepe paper peonies and share them on social that you tag us with Made with Leah or also at leahgriffith.com so that we can see your beautiful flowers and share them on our social channel as well. And don't forget, make sure and click the button below to subscribe so that you can be here for our next craft school.